It's a growing chorus of discontent in France. This protest has been organized by the country's powerful labor unions. But people here are worried about more than just the French president's pledge to cut 120,000 public sector jobs. We are suffering in hospitals and old people's homes. We aren't happy with government policy, especially the cuts, because we already don't have the resources to look after patients and old people properly. The cost of living in the Paris region has exploded. People can't pay rent. Some people work full time and live in their cars, and that's unacceptable. Emmanuel Macron was elected 17 months ago, promising to reform the welfare state, believing the current system drains government finances. Pension tax has gone up, costing retirees $460 extra a year on average. Meanwhile, wealth tax, a levy on personal capital, has been cut by 70%, benefiting businesses and the wealthy, something the young leader hopes will boost competitiveness. The problem affecting Emmanuel Macron, like what affected Francois Hollande, is the economy is not taking off, employment is not taking off. If the economy were to take off, then he would reverse this image quite easily and have a more united team. A reshuffling of the French cabinet is expected this week to achieve that unity quicker. Seven ministers have resigned since Macron took office, leading to claims the government is in crisis and a political scandal involving the president's former top aide beating up protesters on camera hasn't helped. Macron has been labelled a president of the rich after implementing policies seen as hitting people on lower incomes hard. But the government says its actions will lead to more growth in the longer term. And it's not changing direction. More reforms to pensions and unemployment benefits are due to be announced in the next few months. Little surprise then that more protests like this have been planned. Oliver Whitfield Mircic, TRT World, Paris. Well, for more on this, let's go to TRT World's editor at large, Craig Kapitas, who's in Paris. Uh, hi, Craig. Emmanuel Macron, as we know, swept to power just 17 months ago on a platform of modernising the economy, which included much of the measures that they're protesting against now, uh, uh, the cutback of thousands of public sector jobs, hiring and fi uh, making it easier for companies to hire and fire people, and also scaling back on the welfare state. So if this was all public 17 months ago, why are they turning on him now for basically delivering on what he promised? It's the difference be, uh, between scheduled delivery and actual arrival of the goods. Uh, one of the wise men of France, Jean-Claude Trichet, who was the former governor of the Bank of France and uh, head of the uh, European Central Bank, you know, told me a few weeks ago that Macron's reforms are going to take a minimum of 10 years to actually get any traction going on he, uh, in France to actually change the playing field because the ideology is so deeply rooted. On top of that, what Macron's doing now, replacing old ministers with new ministers, is the oldest trick in the French political playbook and will do nothing to improve his situation. Yes, and he has managed to implement some of his agenda, the overhaul of France's tax system, uh, reforms in the labour market and the state rail company SNCF, and that's despite massive protests that happened at the time when those measures were uh, looking to be implemented. Do you think that uh, these next round of reforms, as we heard <coughs> in Oliver's story, the political sensitive changes to the pension <coughs> and healthcare system, do you think that they'll be uh, pushed through as well despite these protests? Well, he certainly has the votes, and as you said, this is the platform he ran on, but uh, these ide ideological problems he has going forward, uh, uh, you have a public that's now trying to get him to go back to the days of drinking beer uh, with grenadine and, you know, alongside a plate of shredded carrots while you discuss the relative merits of Trotskyism. Those days are all over here. But France has always been a nation of cultural polarities, uh, and uh, Macron is trying to erase those polarities. And the other problem he has here, it's an old saying in France, nobody can undo the French Revolution. So a lot of that is, is based in that kind of patriotism, which many believe is misplaced. Okay, Craig, we will have to leave it there, but thank you again for joining us tonight.